What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today I'm joined with the Marsman crew to break down the biggest and most important games coming out for July of 2023. And obviously, there's going to be kind of that, that time period where we're going to start hitting a slow kind of shift into the game meta where we've been getting bangers left and right this entire year. But now, as we start to get into the summer, the question is going to be whether or not these games will hit the right way or hit the same level as they've done all year long. And we do have a lot of games kind of that we are kind of have on our radar of games that you should look out for for this month. But I think there's kind of like a, it's a little bit of a different taste that I would say overall compared to some of the other ones that we've kind of dove into for the month of June. But let's just kind of run through the list of games that we have kind of on our radar to, for you all to look out for. So let's start off. We have Synapsis, which is a PSVR 2 game. This was uh, obviously coming out on uh, July 4th. We have Legend of Heroes Trails into Revere, which is on the PlayStation and the Switch, which is coming out July 7th. Maniac Mechanics, which is on the Switch. This is July 13th. It's coming out for uh, X Primoral uh, is on the PlayStation, the Xbox Series X and the PC, which is July 14th. Might and Magic Clash of Heroes Definitive Edition is coming out for PlayStation, Switch, and the PC July 20th. We have the return of the new expansion of the Sea of Thieves, and that is in the Legend of Monkey Island DLC, which is dropping on the Xbox Series X and S and the PC, and I it will probably be arriving for that Game Pass, uh, and that's going to be arriving July 20th. We have the coveted Pikmin 4, which has been kind of talked about for years now finally releasing for the nintendo switch for july 21st remnant 2 on playstation xbox series x and s and pc on july 25th ratchet and clank rift apart is getting its pc port finally on july 26th which a lot of people are excited about the expanse a telltale series is coming out on all the next gen consoles ps uh, ps5 xbox series x and s and pc on july 27th and Disney Illusion Island is coming out for the Switch on July 28th. And we can't forget about the indies. I think this is the month of the indies, where there's so many different indie titles that are out there that we are going to be kind of diving into um, a few, really a few of them later on, which are the ones we're most excited for. But the indie games, we had Venba, or, yeah, Venba, which is coming out PC and Switch July 31st. Viewfinder coming out for PS5 and PC July 18th. Oxenfree 2, Lost Signals coming out PS5, PS4, Switch, and PC July 12th. My Friendly Neighborhood is coming out for PlayStation, Xbox, PC. Um, it's coming out the 18th for PC and the rest of the consoles. It's kind of to be announced. It's going to be kind of arriving. Um, more updates soon to come. And lastly, Double Dragon Gaiden is coming out for basically everything. It's coming out for next-gen and old-gen consoles and the PC on July 27th. And so really the biggest question that we have that we have to really dive into next is which of these games do you feel the most excited for or the games that you think that you should that the fans should be looking out for this coming month and i'll jump into my pick first i'm gonna go with pikmin 4 and this is obviously a 60 dollars game coming out july 21st i mean we saw this in the nintendo direct i think a lot of people have been excited to see about pikmin its next installment what do they have in store for us and the direct really did do a deep dive and what to expect from this game. It's very similar to other Pikmin games you've seen in the past. You're going to go into the field. You're going to use the different Pikmin to help combat enemies as well as find resources and help allies along the way. And I think that what's really um, good about this game compared to some other ones is obviously every time you see a new Pikmin game, they always add new variants of the Pikmin to kind of change things up, make some additions, make it feel like it's a different game. Um, and I think one of the biggest additions here was Otachi. Uh, yeah, uh, Otachi which is basically a, uh, it's like a dog animal that is, it, it, in my opinion, it's like unstoppable. Like this dog literally can move objects, attack enemies, you know, make you breakfast. It, it literally can do everything you want it to do. And it honestly is going to be kind of heavily relied on for this game. But I really like how um, they, you know, they really emphasize this concept of obviously doing every everything for the mission for the day. Make sure you do everything before nightfall comes because every single animal out in the field goes into full Karen behavior and they start to really, really go ultra powered, ultra level, and they are extremely powerful and you don't want to be caught out at night with these animals. I mean, they, they are just, they go into like that red moon moment with uh, Legend of Zelda style, just get really angry and really pissed off. So um, I think that's really good. But 
I think what's cool about this is that there's multiple different agents out in the field, and if you save a certain level of them, they actually expand your bases and they actually give you more resources and more things that you can use for your missions, which I really thought was a really cool concept um, that they expanded upon. But other than that, there's some challenge modes. There is a co-op mode, which I think is a little wishy-washy here because of the fact that the co-op mode is technically a second player can like throw pebbles at animals to like stun them to help the main character main person playing do their missions and it's just like why would i want to play co-op like couch co-op with somebody and just let them do the whole mission and i'm just sitting here throwing pebbles like it's pokemon snap like i'd rather not do that um i'd rather be like another agent in the field helping the main uh, main player do what they need to do and i think that was something that they kind of missed the ball on here but uh, I think overall it's a fun game. Pikmin's always been a pretty relatively fun game. You can do that versus mode. You can, I, mean, I think you can challenge. I have to see whether or not you can challenge people online, but I think it's kind of like that really cool, uh, you know, a next installment, a switch installment that we've been waiting for for Pikmin and seeing whether or not it's going to land is going to be the big question. But I want to jump to one of you guys next. Chris, what do you think is the game that you are most excited for for this month? Yeah, so I have the uh, DLC for Sea of Thieves, so Legend of Monkey Island. Like you said, it comes out uh, July 20th. <clears throat> now, for those of you who don't know, Sea of Thieves is kind of a unique game. It brings a lot of different genres uh, into one game. You have uh, PvP, PvE, as well as like an open world battle royale uh, type game. And, you know, the reason is that you're not really the only crew that's going to be on there. You're going to, there's going to be a bunch of other, you know, pirates seeking treasure and, and trying to take your treasure as well. So it is a very unique game. Now, this uh, Legend of Monkey Island DLC, the gameplay is going to be pretty much similar uh, to the regular Sea of Thieves. The one big difference is that you're actually going to be able to play uh, alone through this story campaign, which is going to be good because... Let me tell you, we've been out on a boat before so many times and we've gotten so many things stolen from us. And uh, if you spend two or three hours sailing the seas and, and beating the Megalodon, beating the Kraken and then getting all this loot and then someone who's way better at the game comes and steals it all from you, you just want to shut your Xbox off and go to bed. So uh, it is a very fun game. It's much more fun when you have a crew to play with. I'm sure the Marsman crew is going to hop on that again when it comes out. Um, but yeah, it's a fun game, but I'm glad the DLC is going to be kind of play at your own pace and, and kind of you can do it by yourself as well. So when I look at Sea of Thieves, I really think it's a fun game when you have a crew to play with because, you know, we've I've played this game when it first came out and me and Frank used to try to like see how far we can get in the game by ourselves. And you can see a completely different like shift in how this game used to be when it was relatively like boring nothing to do to nowadays you, there's a lot more content a lot more stuff that you can kind of do with a squad i still think there are some issues with playing alone or or even just playing with two people sometimes i feel like in you in order for you to really fully enjoy this game you need to have at least three people that you're playing with because like if doing solo missions or doing missions where you have a tiny boat is a very difficult thing to do and i feel like the more content they add in this game it's going to be you know a fun experience so I'm looking forward to seeing whether or not the you know the Legend of Monkey Island is going to be that that thing that keeps elevating you know the Sea of Thieves to become more and more enjoyable. I mean it's going to be interesting to see for sure. Uh, but Angelica, what was a game that you found to be extremely excited for for this month? Yeah, for me it's not going to be one game, and normally there's a bunch of big titles we each focus in on one single game. But I'm going to give some flash notes for a couple under the radar games that people might be enjoying for this upcoming month. You mentioned Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart having their PC port coming out in July 26 at 59.99 for the PC players. This is ported by Nixies, which is a group that does porting for. PS5, um, and this is the group that worked on Horizon Zero Dawn and the Spider-Man ports, but there's a couple other games that I'm going to try to flash through quickly to give uh, the audience some more information. Legend of Heroes, Trails into Revere, you mentioned about the, goes on PlayStation and Switch, and um, this is an RP, uh, RPG turn-based game, you assemble teams with quite a few options of characters, um, specific skills, you can develop character builds, anime art style, so those that are kind of into looking like some Persona type game. Uh, that's one to look out for. Uh, Manic Mechanics. And Mars, we are big fans of uh, Overcooked here. I love double bagging people up in, in Overcooked. <laughs> but this comes to the Switch, and this is not about cooking. This is about 
putting together cars and different vehicles, but it's a similar style to Overcooked. Still waiting for the next installment for that, but this might be one to dive into. Only $24.99 on the Nintendo Store, and it's got about 25 different garage levels. So that's kind of an interesting, it's not a huge game, but they give you a bang for your buck, it seems like. We saw that at the Nintendo Direct. Exo Primal coming to PlayStation, Xbox, and PC July 14th by Capcom. Capcom has been on a hot streak. This is a $59.99 game. Could be coming to Game Pass. I believe it is coming to Game Pass on day one. Online team-based action shooter. And this is taking down hordes of dinosaurs, guys. So a lot of dinosaurs you can go, uh, you can mow down. They have 10 different builds, four assaults, three tanks, and three supports. Open beta was out a couple weeks ago. Remnant 2, the last one. This is for PlayStation, Xbox Series X, and S, and PC. They have three different editions, Standard at $49.99, Deluxe at $59.99, and the Ultimate at $69.99. Um, this was developed by Gunfire Games, and you can play solo or co-op with two other players, and this is a shooter where you're fighting these godlike creatures and bosses. Um, another really interesting type of uh, shooter co-op type game. Four different archetype builds. They have Challenger, Handler, Gunslinger, and Medic. So a couple of under the radar games that people can keep an eye on for this upcoming month. Yeah, and uh, obviously with the bigger titles, you know, really covered in all aspects, we can't really look past these indies. And I mentioned this earlier in the video that you know, the, this is kind of like the month of indies. There's so many different smaller, you know, publishers or, or developers that are making some some games here. And I, I'm going to ask all of us, really, what are what's an indie game that you are most looking forward to? And I'll start with mine. I think Double Dragon Gaiden, The Rise of the Dragon. Um, this is actually a series that has been, you know, started uh, in the arcade scene. It started a long time ago. This is technically the sixth game in the installment. Um, in the entire series coming July 27th of this year, $30 for all plats. And I think that's kind of like a very rare thing to see nowadays. Again, coming out for every single platform out there. I mean, granted, this is a side scrolling action game. It's very similar to like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and, you know, the Simpsons arcade. Like there's a lot of this is a lot of similarities between all those side scrolling action games. and. You know, uh, it, it's been kind of legendary knowing kind of like how you combat different opponents. But where, what I really liked about it was the story is, you know, pretty, pretty appealing. It's pretty standard. Basically, after a nuclear attack in New York City, it's the entire place is basically now like kind of run by criminals. And really, it's up to these, you know, brothers, Jimmy Lee and Billy Lee to kind of outroot this criminal organization that is really controlling New York City. And at this point, there are really so many different characters that you can pick from to help fight and each one of them is has different strengths and weaknesses um but you can play local co-op you can you know, play by yourself essentially you, you no matter what you'll play two characters to fight alongside and they have different combos you can actually switch between them instantly which is a pretty cool thing um very if you like that like arcade style it's really cool has a very nostalgic feel and look of it the art style is really cool I, I'm ex actually really excited for this. A lot of people online I, I have been really itching for the next installment of you know Double Dragon series. So a lot of people have been talking online about how they they are excited to jump back into the series again because the last time we saw one was was back in 2017. So it's been a long time, um, you know, in the game game development cycle that we haven't seen another one of the Double Dragon series. So I'm excited to see how this game comes out. Uh, I'll definitely be. You know you know trying to play this game for sure i actually applied for review codes so we'll find out if we uh, can get some early access stuff for all you dro double dragon fans out there um but i am excited to see how this game kind of lands but i want to jump to everyone else here um so hockey what's the indie title that you are excited for yeah so i picked my friendly neighborhood uh when i was scrolling through the indies this one really stuck out to me um I, it's hard to explain it is like the muppets meet Call of Duty Zombies. I mean, it was unbelievable watching the trailer. I was dying laughing pretty much the whole time. Uh, you're gunning down puppets uh, while trying to solve these problems. And the main thing is just stay alive. And they're, you know, scratching at you, clawing at you. Uh, you can use guns. You have to tie them up to actually stop them from uh, from coming after you. Even if you shoot them, uh, you know, they are puppets, so they're not really alive. They just keep on coming. So it, I think it's going to be a pretty fun game. I don't believe it's co-op, so you're going to have to kind of do this alone and, and uh, you know, try to have fun with it. But I thought it was a very funny looking game. 
Uh, I couldn't find a price point on it. I'm hoping to God it's not a $70 game or even a $50 game. It's an indie game, so it shouldn't be anywhere near that. Uh, but I might give it a try if uh, if reviews come out and it's a good looking game. Yeah, so Angelica, uh, what's a game that you're most interested in from the indie section? Yeah, there was two games, and uh, I just want to give a shout out Oxenfree 2, which is a sequel to Oxenfree 1, which was pretty highly acclaimed. But the one I'm going to go with is Viewfinder, coming out for the PS5 and PC. We saw this at the Direct, coming out on July 18th, and the developer is Sad Owl Studios. And this is a single-player puzzle-solving game where you go through different platforms, and you can change reality of the platforms by using pictures. And it's either pictures you find and pictures you take, and it can change the platform to assist you in going through these levels. I thought, again, this is probably not going to be a thrill-seeking type game. You, you know us at this uh, channel are pretty thrill-seekers when it comes to video games, but this is a game that you're really going to use your mind, and I think the creativity um, of this game was really unique and interesting to me when I looked into it. So keep an eye on Viewfinder. It might surprise some people this month. Yeah, man, I'm excited for a lot of these indies. They all seem very unique and interesting in their own way, so... Uh, you, you have to give a lot of credit to these indie developers for, you know, pumping out these games and really sticking true to their, you know, the, to their passion. So you got to give them a lot of credit. But that's going to be it for the video, guys. If What do you think about these different game announcements for, for July? Do you think they compare to some of the other ones that you've seen from this year? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. And until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.